Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HC. This is video 32, and today we're talking about the effects grid. So the effects grid is located in the center here with these three columns. It's kind of similar to the four we have up here, except that it's three, and it's not going to be per voice as it is up here. So let's go to a new preset, and we have a saw wave, right? So let's say we want to add a reverb. We can click the cell here, and we can find Rev 1 which we're gonna go into depth with each different module here, but I just kind of showing you how this thing works here. So we can have a setup like that. We can also use send and return. So we can grab this reverb here, put it on its next lane, increase our return, and then give it a little bit of send if we'd like to do it that way. And we have two lanes of this. So we have this return here, the second return as well, and that's gonna to correspond to send one and two. So we can grab this reverb, put it on this third column here and increase this second send here. And both of these sends are modulatable with these knobs down up here, which is really cool. But I do want you to be aware that when you're doing send and returns, it's sending the unprocessed signal to the send and return. So what that means, let's go to a new preset. And for this first oscillator, let's change this to a sine wave, something like this, right? We have a sine wave. So let's say, for example, we go here and we put a distortion on it here. So let's go to disk three, let's bring down the output and then increase the input here. So we have a distorted sine wave kind of looking like a square wave, right? So on the second one up here, let's go here and let's add a delay. And let's bring up the mix here pretty substantially, something kind of like that. And then let's send and return it. So what we're, what's happening here is we're getting the delay back as a clean sine wave because it's not sending it post this distortion here. So hence it's sending this the, as the unprocessed signal there. Let's go back to a new preset here. A couple things down here at the bottom. Let's add a reverb again, just to kind of have something like that. We have the FX bypass. And if you keep this on and you change presets, that's going to stay on. So keep that in mind as well. And then over here on the right, we have our master output here. And if we double click by default, it's 100. We also have another 100 range here, just so we can go plus 200, just in case we need to boost the output for whatever reason that we would like to. So last thing before we let us go here, let's go back to a new preset here and maybe let's go, let's add, I guess, another <laughs> reverb here, something kind of like this. And then what we can also do as well, so let's say over on this next one here, we can add an EQ and then maybe something like, I don't know, let's go for another distortion, something like that. So we can always do this kind of in a weird parallel way, right? So we can right click this EQ, go input one. So now we're sending this kind of in two places here. One's getting processed here and the other one's getting processed here. So you can always route stuff in that sense as well. So in this scenario, kind of like we did before, if we had this as a distorted sine wave and then sent that to the delay, then we would also get a distorted sine wave. So we can always do it a couple different ways, but I kind of wanted just to show you that you can do it that way as well. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.